Two months ago, in a three-part series, we built this little robot, who we've nicknamed Cogsworth. His purpose was simple. Scan an area, measuring radio signal intensity as it moves, and then plot that data into a matrix. The goal was that by doing this, we could essentially take an image in radio frequencies by turning those signal strength values into color values. And since he was tuned to pick up Wi-Fi signals, we could essentially take a picture of Wi-Fi. And when all was said and done, it was a huge success. Not only did we manage to take a beautiful image of the inside of the hackerspace that I work out of, we also took a picture of a whole building and could see where all the Wi-Fi routers were. In essence, Cogsworth is really just a tiny radio telescope, and at the end of the project I said we were starting to design his big brother. After the corner reflector video, I ordered a new grid antenna both in case the corner reflector didn't work, but also because I knew I wanted to build a bigger version of Cogsworth. So this week we'll be starting on that build. We'll be coming back to the corner reflector in a couple of weeks when we get back to Go's reception. I just put in my order for the new Elect Sawbird filter, so as soon as it shows up, we'll try again for GOES. There are a few reasons I wanted to build the bigger version of Cogsworth. The first is that of all the satellites I'm interested in getting data from, only a very small amount are in geostationary orbit. Many of them are in low Earth orbit, so they move through the sky very quickly. For example, the NOAA satellites we looked at in an earlier video. Those satellites actually put out two signals. The first is the APT signals at 137 MHz we looked at, and only require a simple omnidirectional antenna to receive because of their high power, but the images aren't very high quality. The second is the high resolution images that are broadcast at 1700 MHz, but the signal is much weaker and requires a parabolic antenna like this one to be pointed directly at the satellite for the entire pass, meaning that we need a tracking mount. And there are many other satellites that work on the same concept that provide different images with different amounts of zoom, as well as lots of other science data. The other obvious use for a rig like this is radio astronomy, and we may even try taking another Wi-Fi image, but because of the increased range of this antenna, we could take a picture of many buildings at once. When the antenna first arrived, I quickly assembled it using the directions that came with it, then we whipped up a quick mount so that we could go outside and give it a try. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting much, but we aimed it at GOES and then the moon to see if we could see the signal from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, but didn't pick anything up. We did, however, find out that my low noise amplifier was acting up and probably why we've been having so many issues, as it was throwing waves of useless noise. So that got thrown out and is being replaced with a better one. Back inside, we can get started with the rest of the project. A lot of people complained about the build quality of Cogsworth, but the whole point of that build was that it could be done with only common tools. This time I wanted it to be a wee bit more professional, so I decided I was going to put a lot more effort into designing every piece and cutting as little by hand as possible. This meant spending an enormous amount of time milling out all of the pieces. When the build is done, I'll be uploading all the SVG files so that anyone who wants can build one themselves. Just like last time, this will be set up in an alt-azimuth configuration. Basically, this just means that it tips up and down and rotates horizontally. To do this, I'm going to need two sets of gears to drive everything. While those were cutting, I started working on the frame of the build. This time, rather than PVC, the supports were made out of some square extruded aluminum, so I cut two pieces for the vertical supports and one for the arm. The vertical pieces are 36 inches, and the arm was initially 24 inches, but I'll be cutting 4 or 5 inches off to give more clearance, but we'll look more at that next week. Next, I drilled out holes for bearings at the top of the vertical supports, and a hole in the armature to fit the upper axle. A piece of threaded rod is going to be used for this so that I can bolt things together tightly when it's time to assemble everything. So I drilled a smaller hole to align with the center of the bearing to let the rod pass through the aluminum. Initially, I drilled a hole in the center of the armature bar, but later decided to drill one that's much further to one side so that I could use the armature like a lever so it'll require less weight to counterbalance things. Once the top gear was cut, I test fit everything and then cut two small pieces of steel tubing to act as spacers that'll keep everything centered. Next week, I'll be cutting a small mounting plate for a stepper motor and the small drive gear which will be mounted near here. With that done, I moved on to the lower assembly. First off, the gear had two square holes milled into it which had to be filed to their final dimension. This way, the two vertical supports can fit through, and I won't need to add a key like I did last time to deal with slippage. Really, the main design consideration for this whole build was to have as little slippage as physically possible, since that was the most frustrating part to fix last time. The next piece I milled out is what the whole assembly will use to let it rotate smoothly. It has six holes for vertical bearings and four for horizontal bearings, though in the end I only actually used three of the vertical bearing holes. Once the part was milled, I had to drill out the horizontal holes by hand, but I'll be adding those to the SVG before I upload it, so that they can be milled properly. I just used a 1-inch spade bit to get these to the right depth, then filed a slot for the bearings to fit in snugly. I was lucky enough to find bearings with built-in spacers that made it easy to mount these, but I'll be tweaking the design to instead work with normal flat bearings, as this was the least ideal part of the build. For this part to function, it needs a track to sit in and rotate in. 
When I first did this, I just used what I had on hand, and that meant cutting three pieces to layer so that things fit properly and were the right height, but I'll be remaking this and milling the final version out of a single thicker piece. But for now, I just used what I had on hand so I could test this. Basically, it's just a lower plate that the vertical bearings can run on, with a big hole in the middle so that the vertical supports can fit through, and then a wider inner diameter for the upper plate for the horizontal bearings to roll in and keep everything centered. To hold the vertical bearings in place, I cut a couple pieces of steel rod and then drilled holes into the side of the part to accommodate them and hold the bearings at the correct height. Then they were just gently tapped into place to lock the bearings in. I left a little bit overhanging so that these could be removed if necessary, but the fit was tight enough that they shouldn't come loose. When all was said and done, this was the result. The whole assembly sits snugly, but can still rotate without much effort. It took a little bit of filing and adjustment to get it to this point, but once I redesign it to work with flat bearings, that shouldn't be necessary. Eventually, the horizontal bearings will be epoxied into place, but for right now, they're just free-floating. The last piece I made was a mount for the antenna itself. The antenna is designed to fit over a pole, so I used a piece of the PVC tubing I initially used for the stationary mount, and then used the scroll saw to cut a square hole out of it. With a little bit of filing, this now fits snugly over the armature, and the antenna mount holds tightly to it. With that done, it was time to give everything a test assembly. One piece I didn't mention, but that got cut with one of the other gears, is a little bar to help hold everything in alignment that goes at the bottom of the vertical supports. When everything is done, a weight is going to be hung here to help keep everything seated and prevent the whole thing from being top-heavy. The way this all fits together, the horizontal gear sits about halfway up the vertical supports, and then the rest hangs below it. Once everything was assembled, I gave a gentle test and the bearing assembly worked amazingly to keep everything moving smoothly. So what's left to do? Well, as I mentioned, we need a mounting bracket for the upper motor, and we also need one for the lower motor. We also need to make a base plate for everything to sit on, and cut legs to keep the bearing track elevated so that the supports aren't rubbing on the ground. After that, the armature needs to be trimmed to length, all the weights need to be added, bolts will be added to the vertical supports for things to rest on and keep them in place, and then finally we can wire up the electronics, which is just going to be the brains from Cogsworth. And then we can finally give it all a test drive, but that'll be for next week. Luckily, since all the code was written last time, I'll be able to spend all my effort fine-tuning this and getting everything running smoothly. I've already found a GNU radio script for decoding NOAA HRPT signals, so we'll explore those next week once this is all working as well. I think this is already working a lot better than last time, and I think that's because I've been trying to incorporate everything that I've learned the last two times I've built things like this. And hopefully it'll make it so that anyone interested in making one of these will have a much easier time of it. I've put a link in the description to the antenna, and next week, once they're finished, I'll post all of the SVGs. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to see when I post new videos. I post a new video every Thursday, so be sure to check back and see all the cool stuff we'll be doing over the next few months. And be sure to follow me on my other social media platforms to see these projects as they develop. As always, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons that make these videos possible. That's all for now, and I'll see you next week.